chaos and nonlinear dynamics. Unfortunately, because uh, only 50 minutes, so I decided to skip through nonlinear dynamics because also chaos also related to nonlinear dynamics, and, and my topic is more uh, image-based analysis. So I will show you maybe more pictures than what I'm going to say. Uh, the thing is, I would like to introduce some kind of uh, general concept so that we may find it maybe useful um, for your uh, research also, your comments and for my uh, further research in the field of the high content or in the field of engineering in biomedicine. Uh, now, okay, let's go to the code that, you know, statistics, but now we have a theory of regionalized variables uh, developed by Macron in, in France. Uh, this theory mainly applies regionally for, for mining. Uh, so now, geostatics, we know that in engineering or, or com computation, uh, we want to uh, estimate something or compute something, okay? We want it's optimal, so we need to have an error-free estimate, but we, we cannot do this. Okay, so one other thing, so the premise is we cannot obtain error-free, so we have to minimize error, and one of the things that we try to uh, minimize using statistical is that we, we estimate the unknowns, and, and this one using a probabilistic model. But to be different uh, from uh, conventional statistics, this is called a regionalized variable. It has two distinct uh, characteristics. First is it's structured, and second is acts like randomly. So both like deterministic and random as well. That is the characteristics of the regionalized variables. Okay, so one of the key things here that we say that is the we study the spatial correlation. Okay, that's called a variogram. Here, this theory is different from other conventional uh, statistical analysis because it's some kind of data. We don't find the, the variance, the correlation, but the data we can find, okay, the variogram. And the concept is the modeling is very simple and, and it can be simple and effective for, for computer implementation. So, this is kind of a function, it's simple, the model, this is the we call it a semi-variogram or semi-variance, and this is the lag the distance. See, the typical model like this, you have a curve like this, you see, no correlation, okay, the data is uncorrelated. And this one, okay, the data is correlated at some distance, and here is correlated at any distance. And this is the typical forms, okay, of the semi-variant function. And based on this function, okay, the theory of geostatistics is developed on. And we use this one, okay, for particularly for image segmentation. If you do the high content screening or, or cell in cell biology, and we need to segment, okay, the region of interest. So, so that's the way that we had to to use this, okay, to do the image segmentation. So, one of our earliest uh, collaborating in, in biomedics with cell biology that uh, with the uh, professor Dennis Crane from Griffith University in Australia. That's where also I came from. Uh, he interested in about the uh, paroxysm disorders. So one of the images he has the uh, image like this is the normal, and this is the syndrome. Uh, and his specialty is trying to use the software uh, image J from NIH, uh, but if, uh, they cannot find okay satisfactory results. Uh, and the way they did manually, they count number of spots. So they interested in the find the number of spots and the distribution, and they did it manually. So we get involved and we develop a technique how to do this automatically. Uh, we published this paper in the 2000 and somewhere, 2004, okay, quite a long time. Okay, we use a uh, fuzzy uh, uh, clustering analysis, okay, to try to quantify the number of spots so that it can be helpful for biologists and, and the software is still being used now. And because of this uh, publication and Harvard uh, Center for Bioinformatics, uh, they are interested in our software and they use it, and they are uh, interested in our collaboration. So we came over and then they showed me uh, the, the NRA screening, okay, that need to be done, okay, automatically. So I was shown when I went to Boston, they said that they are interested in, okay, 
quantify or automatically identify these patterns automatically. Okay, you have a normal uh, spiky and, and roughly. How we can do this automatically? Uh, so, uh, for example, they have say three channels and how we uh, quickly okay, do this for, for high content screening. And this is a typical screening when I look at this, I feel very uh, daunting task, uh, but it's, it's doable, it was doable. So we try to do this, but say one of the things that I was fascinated about is automated image analysis, because they say that if we do this manually for drug discovery, so it's kind of impossible because it would take about a year okay, to process this kind of a database for, for drug testing. Okay, uh, we also we get some, not all the results, but some particular results, and then we develop a novel kind of advanced image analysis okay, for study uh, for high content screening. And we go further, we apply uh, for this particular this, the uh, collaborators, they are interested in find out how we can identify automatically the phases of the cell, uh, like for cell division. And, and we develop the software and, and our collaborator is happy with the results so that they can help them, okay, to reduce the time for the manual processing. So here that we can talk about the geostatistics, so I developed this technique. Uh, it's, it's, you can see this. For example, this is the, the spots, okay, the image. And if you use the histogram, you don't see anything here. It's very difficult. If you, can, uh, you cannot see whether it's a background or the foreground the segment. But you use a semi variogram okay, you can see the function. Okay, from the function here, if you see, you have, also is one of the well-known technique that many biologists use for segmentation. Also, the fuzzy seeds clustering also the well-known on what is shed. It actually does confuse between the spots and the uh, standing. But this technique based on geostatistics, okay, it can separate the spots okay, more clearly and can be better for automated quantification. Okay, now let me go um, into the concept of chaos, of course. I, um, I don't want to teach chaos to biophysicists. Uh, but the topic that I collected with biophysicists for, for, uh, for true interstellar space. Now, for a simple introduction, okay, if it's chaos, say for example, we will examine two types of data. Okay? These two types of data have the same mean, variance, and the power spectrum in the Fourier transform. Okay, look, if you look at data one here like this, and data two, the two types of two sets of data look very similar. Okay, now, data one is random because if we reconstruct, okay, the signal, okay, xn plus one, xn, the phase space reconstruction, you can see that all the points over here on the space. Okay, for signal number two, this is deterministic, okay, so when you do reconstruction, you can see that kind of a function here, okay, over the, the space. So this is the chaos. So chaos is not something random, but it's deterministic, but it's very difficult to predict. So now, okay, so if the biological data, okay, we have something like this, I think chaos can be useful for the quantification. For deterministic, we have this one, okay. Complex chaos is kind of a complex output, okay. And also, if you have you change the parameter initially, okay, they are closed, but a little bit change, it can be very different. That's why we call it butterfly effect in, in chaos analysis. Uh, I also use the theory of chaos, okay, uh, to develop a technique for image classification. For example, this is the, from the database of NIH, they want to study the theory of aging. Okay, this is the warm mus uh, muscles. So they want to automatically okay, classify okay, the phenotypes of the pattern of the worm okay, according to a few days. Because it's, it's very expensive to, to, uh, to carry out experiments over humans. So they do a human model, uh, animal model. So our technique, okay, we use less features, but we can obtain okay, uh, competitive, even a better result in some data sets. Okay, uh, I'm going to end this talk by uh, talking about the real application um, with the biophysicist. He's interested, Professor Ichikawa, he's interested in the oscillation model of the cancer cells. 
So here, using the focus ion beam and uh, scanning electron microscopy, he, he, he model and he capture. This is the real cell, and he want to uh, biologists want to extract. Okay, those elements, organelles of the cell, automatically. Uh, particularly, that's the mitochondria, so that they can do the reconstruction, 3D reconstruction. And see, this is they, they show okay the nuclear and uh, the organelles and the biology. Uh, typical, okay, we do this. So you have to extract the mitochondria automatically, okay, for them, so that they can do the 3D reconstruction, and then they can validate their hypothesis. And we also we find some result using the theory of chaos and for the intracellular space. Uh, we can distinguish some kind of a difference between the cancer and our cells. Okay, another one that we do is this, uh, we talk, we, we uh, collaborate on the, the dynamics of the ER network. So, I don't have to explain to biologists about the ER network, but if I say, what are he interested in the dynamic of the cells? Uh, because he showed me some paper, say that, okay, this is little in no, I'm going. Uh, little you know about the dynamics okay, of this. So through his video, uh, I just, if we take, actually we take the 10 videos, okay, they apply different drugs, okay, over the ER network, and we do the chaos analysis. You can see we call the butterfly because we reconstruct and we can signal like this. And we find, okay, some, okay, value um, for for the 10 videos, okay, over the images of the drug, uh, of this, of this uh, ER network. Also, for two his, this is ER network, okay, we study this kind of a signal. Uh, we find it some kind of, because he want to know, we study the motion, this is actually the image frame, the motion of the, of the ER network. Interested to see whether this one is actually random, deterministic, or, or chaotic. And we find some kind of a chaotic, behavior uh, of the network. Okay, we find some result is kind um, is promising and it's also original and we uh, would like to further uh, develop uh, advanced technique or gain deeper understanding uh, for st studying the dynamics in, in cell biology. Thank you very much for your attention. Okay, so I think we have one uh, question from the audience. For your question, then please give Dr. Tan. Okay, thank you. Okay. So. <clears throat>